Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to Sprite Tutorial Weekend here on Game From Scratch. What we're going to do today is show you step by step how you can use an animated sprite in the Unity game engine. Now this was specifically requested of me in the recent Humble Bundle, the Fresh Start Game Dev Assets Bundle. There are a number of different background sprites, uh, character sprites and so on. And someone asked me how do I use an animated tile sheet in the Unity game engine. So that's exactly what we're going to look at today. If you're interested, I will drop links to this bundle down below. I did a hands-on video with it. and the particular set of assets I'm going to use today are from the $1 tier, just this Medieval Townsfolk pack. It's a collection of sprites of various different characters from a medieval setting. But as you can see, there is a ton more in this particular bundle, a lot of its backgrounds and so on, or special effects. But what you're going to see can apply to just about any sprite sheet. So if you get head over to uh, Open Game Art and grab a sprite sheet, you can follow along. But if you're interested, uh, I will have the links to this bundle down below. And the particular one that we are looking at in this case is the Medieval Townsfolk. So once you've got that, you extract it out like like so. So it looks like this. It's a collection of various different characters, a uh, number of sprite sheets for each one. The one that I'm interested in is the blacksmith, just because I picked it at random. And you'll notice we have a number of different animations here. So what we're going to be looking at is the idle animation. For example, this guy right here. And you'll notice you have a set of sprites. So this is the front, a set of idle animations, left, right, and back. So we're really only going to care about the front in this particular case, and we're only going to care about two sets of animations. You can take that information, extrapolate it into something much, much more complex, obviously. So what you're going to need to do is fire up the Unity game engine. Now, you can use any version of Unity after about, I think, 2019.3 was the last version that changed the sprite behavior, so it might tweak slightly. I'm using 2020.2.4F1 uh, in this particular case. And I'm in my assets folder and all I'm going to do is grab the sprite sheet I'm interested in. So as I mentioned, we're going to do an idle frame, but we're also going to showcase how to do a knockout frame. So one of these is knockout. Where did you go? Knock. Okay. So KO right here. So here is the other set. It's basically just a fall down animation. Once again, from four different directions. And we will drop that guy in here as well. Also, if you'll notice, come down here, you actually have Uber Sprite Cheat. So if you want to have a whole lot of animations, you've got more complex ones available there as well. I'm just going to go with these two. Again, you can take the information I'm going to show you and use it much, much more in depth if you wish. So the first one we're going to do is grab that first sprite sheet we selected. And since there are multiple sprites on it, what we need to do is with it selected, go over to the inspector and change the sprite mode. What we want sprite mode is set to multiple. And then once we've selected multiple, we're going to go into the sprite editor. Once we are there, yeah, go ahead and apply that. There it is. Now there's a couple ways to go about doing this. Um, the first way, so we're going to go in the slicing tool. We can do an automatic. And what you're going to see is it goes down to the minimum size sprite. Now, in some cases, you may actually want to work this way, but you can see what it's done. It's basically, it's gone down to just the, the smallest boundary of pixels. So it's pulling in around the shadow and nothing else. The problem with this is the width of these, so that you can see the front facing is actually narrower than the side facing because there's less pixels to grab. What you probably want to do instead is go to slice and you're going to switch from type of automatic to either size or count. So size, you can come in and say, I want to do this by 128 by 128 pixels because I happen to know how big each grid is and then I can do a slice there or I could have also come in here and done my count in which case I have three columns and four rows and slice and you get the end, same end result as you were doing it. By the way, you can do other things here in the sprite editor so you can set up uh, physics outlines um, and so on but really that's all we're going to focus on today. That's all we got to do and once we've got it split up like what we want, we're going to go ahead and just click apply. So there we go. We're good to go. We can now treat this as uh, 12 separate sprites essentially. So when we come down here now and we look at that guy, expand it out, you'll see all of the individual sprites there. Now we're going to need to do that for this guy as well. No explanation, this exact same process. So once again, multiple, sprite editor, apply, slice. It keeps the column setting, so we're good there. Slice that up, apply, and done. All right, so now we have two sets of animation to work from. We are most of the way there. So now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and actually create our animation. So the first way, we'll grab this first guy, the idle frames, and we're just gonna go in here and control select the three frames that are the front facing idle animations. And we'll just drop that into our scene like so. And what this will do, since it's set in multiple animations, it'll automatically make a default first animation for us. And I'll call this guy idle, named after Eric. Okay, there we go. So we got uh, Eric here in scene. Let me actually change there. Eric. That's a long way to go for a bad pun. All right, so there we go. So we got our guy in the scene. We are good to go. We can go ahead and play this. 
The results are going to suck, but we can play it. So you see we have a very twitchy looking dude here. Well, what we're going to probably want to do is change the pace of that animation. There's a couple ways we can do this. The easiest way is basically we can come in here and change the number of samples. So let's change the samples down to three. If you do not see that, I believe you can configure it to show here. So you can show, show sample rate on and off. Click this guy on, change samples down to three, and then we are good to go. So now if we go ahead and play this, our animation is basically three frames per second. We got our three frames in there. It looks good. You can tweak around with it until you've got it to do what you want. So now what we've got is our second animation. How are we gonna work with that? So here's our set of idles from one direction. Well, here is our fall down animation. Same process, basically click the first guy, control click the next frames, all of the frames in your animation sequence that you want and pop them into the scene. And now what this is going to do is create a next animation. We'll call this one fall. All right, so we now have idle and fall, as you can see right there. And we can go ahead and uh, grab Eric number two and delete him from the scene. So now we have this guy right here with our fall animation. We also created a controller for us. We can click that guy and you will see right here, this is the animation controller there. All we're going to do in this case is change our animation slightly. So we've got entry, idle. You can go in here, you can create basically animation states way beyond what I'm going to do here. All I'm going to do is chain it from one animation to the next animation. So basically it's going to start, idle is going to play, and then we are going to switch over to fall. So I'm going to drop in my fall animation as another node. We'll grab this guy right here, make a transition, and drop it to fall. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So you can see here, you can preview the animation over here. Oh, there's no model. Hmm. That's weird. All right, so our animation should be defined. We're good to go. Uh, let us go back to our scene and play. Oh, so what you're noticing there is our second animation is, uh, what's the word, uh, fast. So we come in here once again to, oh, that's, that's idle right here. We're going to fall and we'll set that to three frames as well. So what will happen is our idle animation will play and then our fall animation will play. And again, it's all being controlled by the controller here. Here you can go ahead and add a whole bunch more. So you could do various different states. You could do a blend tree to blend from one animation to the other animation. This is where your code would hook up. Uh, you can set parameters and such. We can have multiple layers if you wish. You can create new layers of animation. But all I'm showing you is a very basic animation state tree here. And we go back over here and press play. And now you will see we go through our idle and then we fall. There we go. So you'll notice here. Oh, and I also didn't. So if I go back to that animation controller here, you'll notice over here we have an exit. So our animation is uh, going to the fall state and then failing again. What I could actually do is bring this guy so I could go make transition and I could go back. And what this will cause is basically an ongoing loop of our animation. So uh, let's go ahead and play our game. And now what you'll see is he's going to fall down and then get right back up. Fall down. I'm going to get right back up again. There you see. All right. So there's how you could control it. Or if you just wanted to have it kind of a one and done, uh, we could have done the same thing. But instead of looping back like what we did here, we could delete that guy. And we could go here, make a transition, and we could drag that transition over to our exit node over there. That's it. Uh, very basic animations in uh, the Unity game engine. As you can see, bringing in multiple sprite sheet sprites is quite simple. Basically, just create, bring them in, turn them into sprite sheets, drag the sprites you want that will create an animation, repeat that for all the various different sprite sheets you've got. And then uh, you can create these controllers here that kind of transition between the different things. And then ultimately you would put some code in here. So if you know you press left, then you switch from idle to the other animation state and you control that all here. But we're gonna stay pretty basic and that's gonna just showcase how to bring in animations and set them up. You're also gonna notice over here, uh, you can add in and have uh, multiple different animations here. So I could set things up over here and we could grab uh, one of our guys and we could actually keyframe uh, scaling and rotation and all those things. So we could go over here uh, and then create new keyframes, move him around. So you notice as I just changed the position, it created a keyframe for it. And then we could advance the timeline forward so we can move to the next frame. Or as we move through the frames, you can basically keep um, moving him, have it automatically create keys. And then you see, so you can animate other properties as well. So if you want to have a walking left to right or whatever, and you want to have movement in there, you can do that by setting up these keyframes across the timeline. You've also even got control over how they blend in between with the use of curves, but that's about the extent of what I'm going to cover today. So that is it. That is 2D sprite animation in the Unity game engine. You saw like the basics, but everything you saw here, you could bring it in, you could apply it to multiple different directions. You could create more advanced uh, controlled state trees for controlling your animation controller. And 
all of the basics were covered today. So hopefully you found that useful and you're enjoying Spray Tutorial Weekend here on Game From Scratch. So let me know if you have any other tutorial requests and that's it. See you all later. Goodbye.